All right, how are you guys doing? This episode is sponsored by Hillsdale College. Uh, over the last three-ish days, I guess three, four days, something like that, I've been actually traveling quite a bit. And I'm, I'm back for the next couple weeks, and I'm off again. I'm going to have a new guest on tomorrow. I'm going to call him a guest. Uh, he lives down the road from me. He moved here from Colorado. It has a guy who originally actually started this channel with me. Uh, for, actually, I started this channel, and then I brought him on. Then he went and did some other stuff, and now he's back to, he's going to come on the channel tomorrow. That's Tardio. You guys remember him. I'm gonna be, maybe you guys do, maybe you guys don't. I don't, I don't really know. But there's been a lot that's been going on, and it's, it's um, I don't know, I'm, sure, I'm sure most of you guys have actually heard about it, but Wagner storming through Russia on some strange rampage this past weekend on the way to Moscow. It was very, very weird. When, when I, I, was, I remember I was walking through my hotel room, flipped over my phone, just, I say flip over my phone. <laughs> you don't flip open your phone anymore. Open my phone screen up, I guess you would say, or whatever you want to call it. And I, it just so happened to be... It, <laughs> My, my guy, Prigozhin, the, the king of content, decided he was going to go on a rampage in Storm North and attempt to get himself to, to Moscow. I don't really know what the end goal was. It was it was like unfolding the entire time when I was on a plane. I, I couldn't really do much. It was really weird. Really confusing. And today, I'm still pretty confused about it, to be truthfully and honest with you. Uh, he spoke for the first time. That is Prigozhin. And uh, since this attempted coup, I, I don't know if that's what we want to call it, but... Oh my God! He, we all know that he has a, a pretty long outstanding. He, he doesn't like the Russian Ministry of Defense, or or maybe it's maybe it's just us being played that he doesn't. But he did say this, despite the fact that we did not show any aggression, a missile attack was actually launched against us, and that's what he's talking about. He went, not not us as in me, but I'm speaking from what he said. Thirty fighters were killed and others were injured. This served as a trigger for our immediate advance. Oh, okay. Well, this is very strange. So now he's claiming that they hit him, and then he's just like, you know what? We're going to advance on Moscow for some reason. Now, one of the columns have been, uh, apparently went to Rostov. As you guys didn't know, the other one went towards Moscow. No. He said not a single soldier was killed on the ground, and they re- they, that he actually regrets striking the aircraft. Uh, but they did attack them with bombs. It's the weirdest thing ever, guys. This is, is it's very, is this not really weird? It's so weird. He stated that they traveled 780 kilometers. This is 200 kilometers from Moscow, or to Moscow, excuse me. And then they blocked the military bases and airfields along the way. Among the PMC fighters, there was actually several wounded, and two of them were killed. Among the employees of the Ministry of Defense that decided to join our cause, they said they didn't have any. Or excuse me, that two died on their part as well. Now, this is this is the weird thing. Okay, He says that none of the PMC fighters were actually forced to do this march. And everybody knew his goal in the entire... Well, from the beginning, he stated that his march was uh, showing serious security problems across the country of Russia, but it was never our goal to overthrow the current regime and legally elected government. That's the weird part. So I guess he was just storming through his own country to prove that he could and their security was lackluster. I did see another Russian general state that the only reason why they were able to move so fast through the country was because... It's very weird because they started staging their men in Moscow just in case he attempted to take Moscow. He also stated that the Wagner PMC group was supposed to cease operations on July 1st of 2023. But out of nowhere, the Belarusian president suggested that they could continue operations on the legal jurisdiction of Belarus. God, such a weird... The, the, the winner of this entire thing clearly is going to be Ukraine as of right now. As of right now, without the support of the Wagner group, the Russians wouldn't have been able to take certain cities and key cities inside of uh, Ukraine, as we do know. I'm going to say Mariupol being one of them, the other one being, uh, well, Bakhmut, as we know, Severodonetsk being another one. Pretty much all the major cities that they currently hold were taken by them. Now, the crazy thing here is the fact he's apparently bringing his men and equipment into Belarus, where he's going to be treated like a king by a man who literally fed Steven Seagal carrots during their initial meeting. Это вот те арбузы. Кстати, у нас природа не позволяет их возделывать. Mm-hmm. Но мы попробовали. Nice. Готов, готов. Готов. Nice. 
thing. I don't know. This whole thing is really weird. The Wagner Group kills Russians, shoots down its only, I mean, one of its largest legit assets, like air assets, which was, it's fairly rare, by the way. It's a command and control aircraft, which I, I think there's only 12 of them currently, like in existence. So now there's 11, I guess. His men shot down six helicopters as well in the process and killed 30 or so airmen. That right there is, I, I don't know. I saw all the videos. I'm sure you guys have already seen them as well. So I'm not really playing them of the Russians surrendering as the Wagners came through and them taking them. I wouldn't say hostage. It's just very strange, awkward, just ordeal for 48 hours. There is a fairly large group of people who do believe that this was all stage. I don't know. I'm going to be all over the place. Me being an American, I'm fairly ignorant and I, I naive, I guess you'd say. And it's tough for me to believe that this would be true. The thing that could possibly make it somewhat true but it's still going to be tough for me to want to believe it just because they were killing their own men for no real reason. And I, I don't know, but the Wagners will be getting these new bases that are going to be built inside of Belarus. I don't know if they're built, but they're handing them over some older bases, which they're going to of course repurpose and make them into their own just North of the capital of Ukraine. Very close. Well, much closer than when they've ever been that. That's why the whole thing is somewhat really strange the way it played out. That's it's, do you guys really believe that this gentleman stormed from, the outskirts of Bakhmut, all the way heading towards Moscow, said, you know what, pause, quick left, now let's go sit in front of, and, and just north of, north of Kiev. Really? R Wagner's only been really useful for the Russians who take all the major cities in the conflict. I'm not saying this because this is not going to be the case, that this is what they're going to try to do, but I, I'm just throwing this out there. Putin finally admitted what we all knew as well. Russia fully sponsored Wagner and Prigozhin. He actually stated that just a few hours ago. So since... He has decided to come out and state this fully. I don't know the, the it was like one trillion rubles or something. The number was ma mega log. I, I, I couldn't even tell you what it was. I'd have to look it up on Google for them to tell me how big the number is on how much money that they've given to him. So if that is the case, wouldn't you say that Russia is a state sponsor as a whole of, of terrorism? Like, a, like literally a sponsor of terrorism. Or we can now fully deem them as being such. That's the thing is no one really knows what the deal is. Some people are putting out some crazy speculations that uh, Belarus's uh, president has actually come to some sort of purchasing agreement for fuel. It's it's caused so much speculation, but big news media, mainstream media, big news media has actually started to pick up Ukraine against so people actually listening and watching and seeing what's going on. Granted, there's been a little bit of stuff going on on the ground, which we'll talk about here later on. I'm actually somewhat curious on what's going to happen on the southern side of Kherson, which is which is which could be a really good thing, but also makes you think about what and who really blew the dam. The guy that's going to be in here tomorrow, I'm going to ask him that question. I want you guys to realize that. I'm going to ask him directly. He spent a lot of time inside of Ukraine before. I, I, well, he was a, an actual operator inside of Ukraine back pre-2014. He helped them get all the drugs, or I said the drugs, excuse me, all the guns in there and stuff like that. So I was literally about to say, because he was also with me in Afghanistan, and we were cutting off the drug and gun routes from Pakistan coming over from the Taliban. I literally was about to go on that rant, which you guys heard me talk about the other day. But I don't know how well this thing is going to fare with the diehards inside of Russia. But I would like to think that this thing's only going to last a few hours and they're going to go back to the, the idea that the CIA is, is on some top secret mission to take over Russia completely all the way through. Deal of tongue что сегодня что бы там кто ни говорил, какие-то басни бы не рассказывал. Только пуля в лоб. Единственное спасение и для Пригожина, и для Уткина. Причем они меня знают. Они знают, что я отвечаю за каждое свое слово. Другого варианта нет. Yeah, when he comes on to the show uh, tomorrow, uh, I think he's going to be coming on probably pretty much, I would, I would assume Dale Anner. I'm going to let you guys make up, the, make, make up your mind. He's a good guy. There's nothing wrong with him. But I really would like to ask him, like wholeheartedly, what were you doing pre-2014? What happened leading up to that? Because he was working with, he's going to give us, he's told me, I'm not going to go into depth on his stories because I don't know how much I can say or how much he, he can't say. I have no idea. So I'm not even going to go too far into it. But he's done a lot of stuff inside of Ukraine pre-2014 and I th maybe during 2014 as well. I got out in 2014 and I think he was, I think, I don't know, I'm just going to leave it be like that because it's not really on me. Now, are you guys a few years or maybe even a few decades out of school and wondering what the heck did I even learn? What was the point of that? I myself am one of those kind of guys. God bless me. <laughs> maybe you're wishing you guys should have taken more time to read and study things that's a little bit more meaningful. Something lasting and profound. Well, if that's you, 
And if you know this is you, one, you're not alone, and two, it's not too late. I'm sure you guys live a busy life like we all do. And because of that, you guys might be thinking to yourself, well, I don't have the time to learn something new. But, but time is actually all that you have. You should use as much of it as you possibly can to discover things that make you better and help you guys know what is best. So since 1844, and yes, I said it right, 1844, Hillsdale College has been providing an education in faith, freedom, and character because they believe that a virtuous citizen is the best for defense of liberty. Yes, that is why they've taken some of the core classes they have uh, to teach on campus and made them available for free online for anybody who wants to learn. That's right, for free. The U.S. Constitution, C.S. Lewis, the book of Genesis, World War II, I love World War II, uh, Aristotle, pre, uh, I'm talking free market economics, okay? If any of these things sound interesting to you and maybe even a little bit intimidating, then let Hillside College be your guide. Over 3 million people have taken Hillside College courses online. There are 39 free courses to choose from. They're easy to follow. They're self-paced, so you guys can start whatever you want. In fact, you guys can start right now. It's everything you need all in one place with no long-term commitment. Learn when and where you want Enroll now in Hillsdale's Not For Credit Online Course Program. It's free, it's fun, and it will change the way you understand our country, the world, and the place you're in. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash rob to enroll. It'll be linked at the very top of the description. There's no cost. It's easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash rob. That's hillsdale.edu slash rob to register. Hillsdale.edu slash rob. Now, the more I attempt to dig into this failed coup or whatever we like to call it at this point, I, I, I'm saying it's very confusing. And I think a lot of people that are reading into it are going to see a lot of a noise, I guess is the best way to put it. Because when I did a little bit of research this morning, I, I did it for about three hours or so, I would find one side of the aisle was trying to push a narrative and the other side was trying to push a narrative. And there was some in the middle that were like just as confused as I am. We, we all know that Shogu and Prigozhin did not like each other. Or at least they, they put off that they don't. They both have PMCs. I, you know, that's the other crazy thing, because I, I read something that Shogu actually was under house arrest yesterday, and then come to find out today he was getting some award by, by Putin. Putin's also doing another speech, excuse me, later on, which is another thing that I'm just like, what is going on? But then I see a video of all these Russians, these younger Russian citizens who are like super excited, and they're like really praising their country. So that's the other thing, is I don't know if they're doing this kind of stuff to... Why are they doing this? What is the whole point of it? Like, what would like? I don't know. Maybe it's to, to bring their the, the the people closer. I I don't really know to show how powerful it is. I don't know. You know. You know what? It's going to be time to to, to turn my good friends over on the Russian state TV because I always like to reach out to them for their current thoughts and their situation. Наша задача сейчас. 20 лет президент этим занимается из этого государства сделать сильную страну, нормальную страну где такие вещи больше не будут возможны. В сильном государстве не может такого быть. В сильном государстве есть структура власти. В сильном государстве есть ответственность. И здесь вопрос как раз, как мы можем выстроить систему реальной ответственности сверху донизу, когда такие вещи пресекаются в зародыши, когда невозможно там нарабатывать себе какое-то медийное имя и структура власти не способна с этим бороться. Если мы не выстроим сейчас сильное государство сверху донизу, где это оно будет подчинено именно государственным интересам, интересам страны, интересам народа, а не каких-то решал, которые между собой там чего-то выговаривают. Now I can really help this guy out here. In his attempts to convey this message, all you have to do is not rely on another entity to win a war for you and have a powerful military. That would probably be one of the things. You also shouldn't be funding another organization with tanks and missiles and allowing them to run around willy-nilly without laws inside of another country and utilizing those pieces of equipment. That's just me. I'm just throwing this one out there. It's a pretty crazy thought. I know, I know. I know, guys. It's it's insane. Не можем мы дальше так развиваться. Нам дальше надо великую страну строить. И вот Вчерашний день он показал, что народ, он за великую страну. Он полностью на стороне президента, который за эту великую страну. А всех остальных надо просто убирать. Неумение со своей гордыней жить отличает не офицера от офицера. 
Потому что у настоящего офицера есть вещи, которые он никогда не сделает. А я согласен с теми людьми, которые давали присягу. Им нужно глубоко заглянуть в себя и спросить себя, остались ли они этой присяге верны в тот момент, когда государство больше всего от них ждало их морального выбора, с кем они будут тогда. И та кровь, которая пролита, своя кровь, она никаких зачетов быть не может кровью врагов. 50 миллионов, брошенные с барского плеча за тех летчиков, которые погибли, это не ответ. Это не знаю. Now I thought that there might have been I, I don't know, a time when this guy was, was going to cry, honestly. He was very, very emotional. I, I do give him props for being such a patriotic Russian, I guess you say, as he is. I would say I'm about the same here in America, but career, I don't know, here currently, recently, yeah, recently here in America, has me feel a little bit meh about it, like America as a whole. It's just, we're in a weird spot right now. I never turn my back personally on the country like this guy did, or the, the officers he's speaking about. I would never do anything like that. But it's kind of like, I feel like our country here in America is being destroyed currently from the inside out. Now, I'm not talking about the, the a lot of people say the Biden administration. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about other pieces. I think it has to do a lot with media and one of the stuff that people are consuming more than it is the, the government, to, to be completely honest with you guys. A lot of people are going to, to blame Biden. I think it has a lot to do with, like, for instance, this is a very good one, uh, TikTok, what they show the consumer Tick, uh, what the consumer sees in TikTok on TikTok inside of China. Wow, that was a mouthful. In China, it's completely different than what they see here inside of America. So over there, it's like educational, different. And here, it's like brain-melting stuff. Like, I, I, it's just, I think, I don't know. They're able to push certain narratives very quick through that platform. And I do believe, personally, that's one of the platforms that needs to, like, go away completely here in America. Burn it. Absolute set fire that the son of a gun does not even allow it. It is pretty bad. If you guys think about the younger generation on that thing, which I'm going to go into, I'm sure at some point, Matari and I will talk about that, but that whole thing is crazy. Ты понимаешь общий смысл происходящего? Знаете ли, одно дело быть кем-то недовольным, а другое дело против страны пойти, против народа, против верховного главнокомандующего, всенародно избранного. К счастью, одумались. Ну, конечно, у меня вчера было полное ощущение чуда вечером. Это правда. Я готовился к худшему сыну. Все готовились? Да. А представляете, какой был бы кошмар, если бы там на улицах Ростова и как бы подливали огонь? А, чеченцы с русскими воюют? Да просто страшно. Даже это невозможно. Даже чеченцы за Россию воюют с русским. Да, стали бы подливать? Ведь удалось это избежать. Удалось от этого отойти. All right, so I don't want to be the bearer of bad news here for this gentleman, but that's exactly what it would have been and exactly what it was during when it was happening. I will say a coup attempt was somewhat funny, not entirely shocking with the rhetoric that we saw leading up to it happening in Pergosian. That's why the other reason why I'm telling you guys, it could have been so staged. It really could have been. Think about it. Pergosian, for the, the two weeks prior, is just going absolutely chirp and chirp and chirp and chirp the entire time, how much he hates the Russian MOD, how much he hates the Russians, other than Putin. He doesn't hate Putin. Putin and him are good friends. He wears a shirt with Putin on it. He loves Putin. But leading like up to this, this coup attempt, he was absolutely throttling, just telling them how bad they are. Maybe he does have, maybe he does have, I don't know. It's just so weird. This whole thing is so weird. But the Western media and the people on Twitter weren't going to be putting up any crazy message out there that the Russians weren't fighting, killing their own, because that's exactly what it was. That's exactly what was happening. <laughs> Ведь все уже заготовочки были, все были готовы, все ждали. Была же спланированная медийная операция. Точно, Саджан. И будет отдельное, отдельное расследование, кто планировал, как планировал, как финансировал. Никогда ничего в России нельзя решить мятежу. Никогда. Любая попытка организовать мятеж, это слабость, а не сила. А сила... Сила в русском солдате. Но когда русский солдат совершает ошибку, обратите внимание, Верховный сказал, 
ну, через Дмитрия Сергеевича Пескова, что мы не будем преследовать героев, которые вот совершили эту ошибку, из уважения к их заслугам. Но есть такая фраза. За вчера спасибо, а за сегодня ответим. За сегодня ответим. Выводы надо будет сделать всем, чтобы перед теми ребятами, которые в тот момент, когда 25 тысяч с тяжелой техникой, с противовоздушными системами, тысячи с лишним машин, пошли не на Киев, не на Львов, не на Варшаву, а пошли на Москву. Now this guy right here is a walking meme. 100% walking meme. There was a point where they attempted to walk on Kiev. Okay. That didn't work out as planned. Now, granted, it was not the Wagners. It wasn't Wagners for the... the it was VDV and the, the best of the best from the Russians. So if, if, if they couldn't do it, then I don't think the Wagnerats were going to be able to get it done either. Now, to get to Warsaw, just so he does know, if he hasn't looked at a map here recently, to get to Warsaw and or to Lviv... You would probably want to get past the current front lines. The Russians aren't really holding that fantastic anyway. Well, they, they're holding them. Now, don't, don't, you know, they're holding them. But there's little pockets. and just, Might I add the fact that the Ukrainians have been claiming that they're about to launch some the, the actual offensive. Okay, by the way, the actual one, which here shortly, which I, I, I'm not entirely sure I'm fully understanding the pitch either because, yeah, I don't know. They're saying that everybody's going to be enjoying that outcome. I don't know. That whole thing's also very strange. Haven't even said anything on that, but that's their new. Remember the whole shh program they were doing for like two weeks? Now it's like, don't worry, the offensive hasn't started yet. You're like, what? What What do you mean the offensive? Really is it not started? Are we doing a bunch of probing attacks right now? Сейчас каждый высказывает свое мнение, но я жестко убежден в том, что предателей в военное время необходимо уничтожать. Дело в том, что сегодня, что бы там кто ни говорил, какие-то басни бы не рассказывал, только пуля в лоб, единственное спасение, и для Пригожина, и для Уткина. Причем они меня знают, они знают, что я отвечаю за каждое свое слово. Другого варианта нет. А война затрагивает всю страну. И сегодня, к сожалению, надо готовиться ко всему. Мне крайне непонятно, почему это вообще случилось. Потому что где те органы, которые должны были об этом, во-первых, знать заранее, во-вторых, предупредить, и в-третьих, на основании того, что они предупредили, были, находились на пути движения. Предательство не прощается. Ни в коем случае. Вот просто не прощается. И никак. Несмотря ни на какие заслуги. Как ранее. И я еще раз повторюсь, что единственный выход для этих друзей – Ну, наверное, застрелиться, пока их пули не настигло, потому что другого варианта для предателей нет. Now, I don't entirely disagree with his stance that they need to be held accountable. And that is one of the reasons why I'm a little confused why Putin just said, and, and, and you know what, we will forgive you for everything that you have done. And now, now, go ahead and just reside in Belarus. What? What are you talking about? I would hope that here in America, if we had something like this happen, we would handle it much differently but I know this is something that I don't think we would ever have to worry about as in like somebody getting a bunch of tanks and rolling around. Yes, there's, there's people here in America that do have tanks. I know this for a fact. I went down to a ranch in Southern Texas where the guy had, I, I don't think I had one of the only operational, um, oh God, Shermans, Shermans. I got to shoot a Sherman down there. He's got like four tanks or three tanks, a bunch of machine guns. He's got an old SF guy that makes HME for him. He's allowed to make it. Like here in America, you're allowed to do that kind of stuff. As long as you have the proper licensing and, and you get everything. Like you can do it all. It's not that big of a deal, you know. I, but I don't think anybody's going to be running around with a, an Abrams. I mean, well, I guess you could go out an Abrams as well. But it's going to be decommissioned. So it's, I don't know. I, don't know. I just want a little bit of rant there. I don't see it ever happening. The only thing I think we'd have to worry about here in America would be another civil war between the left and the right spilling out past like it's boiling point. And I think we can all agree, even if you're on the left, you'd probably agree you would not want to be on that side during if, if civil war pain out because ironically enough, the left doesn't like guns, the right likes guns. And if you were to like have a civil war between the two, you probably wouldn't want to be on the left side. I mean, that's pretty much common sense there. So 
There's that. Now, the president of Belarus has actually stated today that specialists, yes, within the Wagner PMC group, once they reach the territory of Belarus, they will be used to train the Belarusian armed forces in combat and weapons tactics, as well as defensive maneuvers. Oh, God. This is such, it's so weird. This right here is one of the reasons why I think he, he might have been spared along with his men. I do believe if Prigozhin wanted to march to Moscow, he probably could have. But do I think he would have taken over the government and enforced any type of revolution? No, I don't think that would have happened. But shifting over to Belarus for a reason might have been... I, I, I sound like I put on my little tin hat here, but tin full hat, I guess you say. What, what if he shifted over to this area of Belarus to force the Ukrainians to shift some of their better battalions back north away from the front? Has anybody thought about that? I don't know. I mean, can we all really believe... Like Russia is the master of deception. So who really knows that this thing was all planned out or if it wasn't planned out by the Russians or some sort of feint to cause some commotion. Like, let's just be real. Like, that's, is that not, is that, is that honest? It is, I mean, that's, well, it's me being honest with my opinion, but that it could honestly be something that's true. The only thing that's really happened on the ground, by the way, is the Ukrainians have established a bridgehead on the southern side of Kherson going into the left bank of the river. Now, we'll say the area they are going into it's not really the easiest to defend so it's going to get kind of interesting over there i think if they're able to actually push through because now they're going to cause from the northern side of zaporizhia or excuse me the southern side of zaporizhia that northern front i guess you'd say you guys know what i'm talking about in this Kherson area if they start to do this it's going to force this pocket to push down because they don't want to lose those major cities because those are the hubs. And it's, it's, I don't know. It could get kind of interesting over there. I do know that the British, um, one of the British, I don't know what did he say. It doesn't really matter which one it was. I was reading it this morning. But he stated that the, the Ukrainians have actually taken back more land in the summer offensive than the Russians were ever being able to take during the, the, the winter. Which, him saying that is actually not that, it's not that, um, it's really not that big of a deal. We're talking about a winter versus summer offensive. It's I don't really know why I said that. But anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. I will be back here tomorrow with Tario. You guys should ask any kind of questions you guys want to hear because he's going to be back here sitting right across from me having some conversations. I do hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I will see you guys tomorrow with another one.